Hello everyone, welcome back to Xcoding with Alvian. In this tutorial video, we're going to learn about the new Lazy V Grid Vertical Grid Layout in CVUI2. We start the tutorial by learning the fundamentals of Lazy V Grid and Grid Item. Also, the differences between the grid item sizes, such as fixed, flexible, and adaptive, using the live preview. Then, we're going to build an IaaS app that uses a single vertical grid to build a list that supports three different layouts. We should be able to switch the layouts in the runtime. Before we begin, please subscribe to the channel if you like the content. So, without further ado, let's begin and start coding. Before we begin, let's check the Apple documentation about the lazy V grid. It is a container view that arranges its child views in a grid that grows vertically, creating items only as needed. If we look at the sample code provided below, we can see that the lazy V grid accepts an array of grid items as the column's parameter in the initializer. Let's take a look at the grid item documentation. It is a description of a single grid item, such as a row or a column. For the vertical grid, it is the column, while for the horizontal grid, it is the row. We're going to focus only on the grid item as the column in this tutorial. We can use it to configure the layout of the item in the grid, such as spacing and alignment. The grid item configuration determines the size and position the items in the column or row in a grid. By looking at the initializer, we can see that it accepts a grid item size enum. It is used to determine the size. The first case is adaptive. It supports multiple items in the space of a single flexible item. The second one is fixed, a single item with the specified fixed size. Third one is flexible. It is a single flexible item. Both the flexible and adaptive accept a minimum size and optional maximum size as the associated value. Let's dive into the Xcode to implement each of the size using an example. Let's open Xcode and create a new Steve UI iOS project. We're going to show an image with square aspect ratio for the grid item. In the extra assets, just create a new image set, name it as image and copy a 200 by 200 image to this. I also provided this image in the project GitHub repository in the description link below. Let's navigate to the content view Let's Swift to start experimenting each size for the grid item. First, let's declare the instance property columns containing an array of grid item. The number of items in the array determines the number of columns in each row for the vertical grid. Inside the body implementation, declare the scroll view as the root view. As the lazy V grid is not scrollable by default, we need to wrap it inside a scroll view. Declare the lazy V grid passing the columns array to the parameter. In the view builder closure, let's use the for each passing the range of numbers between 0 and 32. This will create 32 stop grid items to use inside the grid. In the view builder closure, declare the image and pass the image text to load it from the extra asset. Add the resizable modifier and set the expect ratio content mode as fit. Let's try to implement the first grid item, fixed size. In the columns array, let's put a single fixed size item. Set the size to 200 as the associated value. Build and run the live preview. As we can see in each row, we have a single grid item with a fixed width of 200. Let's set another fixed size item with the size of 200 inside the array. Now the row has two grid items. Let's add the third fixed size item 
with the same size. It shows three items in a row, but now the grid items are getting truncated, especially the leading and the trailing item. As you can see, we have three fixed size grid items with the total width of 200 multiplied by 3, which is 600. It is larger than the current device screen width. The fixed size grid item is not adaptive to various screen sizes of multiple devices. Let's try the second one, the flexible size grid item. In the columns array, delete the fixed size items. Initialize three flexible grid items. The flexible grid item has minimum size associated value that it can pass. Let's pass 150 as the value. Build and run the live preview. As we can see, now we have three grid items in a row. If you see closely, if you see closely, the leading and trailing items are smaller compared to the middle one. We can see that the flexible size grid item will try to fill as many items in a row before it wraps to the next row using the minimum and maximum value. What if we want to make all the items in the row to have equal spacing between them? Yes, we can do it. Just initialize the flexible item like so without passing the minimum value. Looks nice. Let's remove the spacing between the item. The grid item initializer also accepts the spacing as parameter. We just need to pass zero. We can also remove the spacing between the lines by passing the spacing as zero in the lazy V grid. This layout is quite adaptive, but what if we want to show more items per row in device such as iPad or Mac? The answer to this is to use the adaptive size grid item. The adaptive size provides the flexibility to have multiple items in a space of a single flexible item. Let's try to implement this. In the columns array, delete all the flexible grid items. Initialize a single adaptive grid item, passing 200 as the minimum size. Build and run the live preview. I am using iPhone 11 Pro Max as the device in the live preview. I can see two items in a single row. Let's try to add another device to the live preview canvas. You can add another device by clicking on this Add button. Using the Inspector tab on the right side of the editor, we can change the device type. Select iPad Pro 11 inch. Nice! We can see about 4 number of items in a row. With the adaptive size grid item, the number of items in a row is updated automatically to adapt the screen size of the device. That's it for all the examples of using the 3 grid item size in the practice. Choose your grid size depending on the needs of the app you are building. If your app targets multiple platforms such as iOS, iPadOS, and macOS, the adaptive size grid item provides the maximum adaptability. The API provides so much flexibility for the developers to build the layout of the grid. Now, with all of the basic fundamentals we have learned, let's create an iOS app that uses a vertical grid to show a list of items. Let me show you the demo of the app that will build by opening the simulator. As you can see, the app shows a grid of items in the list. The app provides the flexibility to select the grid layout in the runtime by providing a segmented control picker at the top. There are three layouts that we can select. First one is single item. This shows a single item per row, just like a classic UI table view. It has an image, title, and subtitle, double columns. This shows two items per row. In this case, we just show the image of the item. The last one is the adaptive column. This shows adaptive items per row with minimum width of 100 per items. The number of items in each row will automatically adjust depending on the size of the screen. Let's dive back into Xcode and start build the screen. Let me create a new project for this. I'm going to name it Dynamic Grid. Let's create the model that represents the item. Create a new Swift file named item.swift. Declare the item struct that conforms to identifiable protocol. 
declare the properties of first ID with type of UUID, second title with type of string, third subtitle with type of string, and the last one is image name, also with the type of string. Let's create the stub data containing array of the items. Create an extension for the item. Declare a static computed variable that returns array of items. In the body, I'm going to create 32 stop items. We can use the close range operator with number between 0 and 31. Then chain it with the map operator to transform the range into array of item instance. I have provided the assets for this project in the GitHub repository. You just need to download or clone it, then open the XE assets, and then just copy all the images. Let's implement the body. That's it for the item and the stops. Next, let's declare an enum to represent the three different layouts cases, single, double, and adaptive. Let's create a new save file named layouttype.swift. Also, make it implement the cache iterable protocol so we can pass all the cases to the picker later. Each layout needs to return the different array of grid items. Let's declare a computed property named columns that return array of grid item. Make sure to import Swift UI at the top. Using the switch statement, we need to return the associated green items for each case. For the single case, return an array containing single flexible item with the spacing of zero. For the double case, return an array containing two flexible items with the spacing of one. Finally, for the adaptive case, return an array containing single adaptive item with minimum width of 100 and spacing of 1. That's it for the layout type. As the single layout renders an image, title, and subtitle, we need to create a view named single row to handle this. Let's create a new Steve UI file named single row. It has three properties, image name, title, and subtitle. All of them use a string. Let's also implement the preview by stubbing the value. In the body implementation, declare h tag at the root level. Set the spacing to 16. Add vertical padding modifier as 4 and horizontal padding modifier as 16. In the h tag view closure, declare an image passing the image name property to load the image from the asset. Add resizable modifier to the image. Also, set the aspect ratio, content mode, as width. Also, add a frame of 50 by 50 for the width and the height. Next, add a VStack passing leading as the alignment and 4 as the spacing. In the VBuilder, declare the text passing the title property. Set the font modifier as headline. Next, add the text passing the subtitle. Set the font to subheadline. Finally, Add a spacer to make the h tag fill the width proposed by the parent view. That's it for the single row view. Let's go back to the content view. Declare the items variable with type of array of item model. Assign the item stops as the default value. We will need a state property to bind the selected layout to the segmented picker whenever user selects a new layout. Declare a state property named selected layout and assign single as the default value. In the body implementation, declare a VStack as the root view. Set the spacing to 0. In the view builder closure, declare a picker passing layout as the title and the binding of the selected layout property as the selection. Also, add a padding modifier for all the edges like so. We also need to set the picker style as the segmented picker style. In the picker view builder closure, declare for each passing the layout type all cases as the data. Set the ID as self. Each of the case also needs an image representation in the segmented picker. Let's try. Okay, the picker successfully show all the possible cases. Below the picker, declare a scroll view. In the view builder, declare the lazy view grid. For the columns parameter, we can pass the selected layout columns property that returns array of grid item. 
Also, set the spacing to 1. In the lazy v grid v builder closure, declare the for each and pass the item's property as the parameter. In the view builder closure, we can use the switch statement. In the view builder closure, we can use the switch statement by passing the selected layout property. For the single case, we just return a single row, passing the item's title, subtitle, and image name. Let's fix this typo. For both the double and additive cases, we return an image passing the item's image name property. Add the resizable modifier and set the aspect ratio passing fit as the content mode. That's it. Build and try to run the live preview. Click on the play button. Awesome. The single layout shows a single item per row. Let's try to change the layout to double. Cool, the layout now renders two items per row. Finally, let's try the adaptive layout. Nice, the layout now try to fit as many items as possible within the minimum width of 100 before wrapping to the next row. It will be nice if we can add animation anytime the layout changes. With the power of Shift UI, this become as simple as adding the animation modifier to the lazy v grid. Let's add it like so, using the default animation. Build and run the live preview again. Try to change to different layout. Boom! The animation just works like magic with the power of Steve UI declarative syntax. That's it for this tutorial video about the lazy V grid in Steve UI 2. We have learned about the three different grid sizes fixed, flexible, and adaptive. And the grid items determines the size of the position of the items in the grid. With adaptive size, we can create an UI that adapts to various screen sizes using a single code base. At the end, I hope this tutorial can help you all to understand more about the lazy V grid in Steve UI. So, until the next video, let's keep the lifelong learning goes on. Bye!